All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about something that I feel a lot of other EDC content creators don't talk about, and that is why you should EDC a gun. Now, in general, a lot of EDC content creators just don't talk about guns as a whole. And I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, the different social medias being or cracking down on firearm content and treating firearms as if they are their own special category to be mistreated uh, and overall kind of prejudiced. And so I think a lot of times a lot of uh, content creators are kind of scared to mention and talk about firearms for fear of being shadow banned or even just outright banned as a whole for talking about firearms. Now that being said, it is an unfortunate uh, kind of life we live in, but it is still important to talk about firearms and the still continue to integrate them into the culture. As I've talked about in many of my other videos, I do really think that it's important to, even you know, at the uh, cost of being potentially banned or silenced or quieted, uh, I still think it's very important to make gun, guns a part of culture and a part of everyday life. And there's no better way and really no better group to really exemplify that in than, of course, everyday carry. Because, of course, we always talk about, you know, the knives and stuff that we keep on ourselves we are already talking about things like the knives that we keep on ourselves every day for you know daily tasks so why not talk about the guns that we keep on ourselves every day for daily tasks so with that out of the way as always please don't forget to comment like share subscribe check out the patreon the instagram all of the support does mean a ton and of course it helps the channel continue to go continue to function and helps me continue to bring you guys content so now let's jump into some reasons why you should EDC a firearm. Now, out, now, of course, this always has to be predicated with, you know, local laws being respective to those. And of course, being understanding of what the implications are should you happen to use a firearm for self-defense. Now, there are also other videos out there and other content creators that have talked about, you know, different alternatives to the modern day firearms, things like black powder revolvers for places that are more restrictive. At the end of the day, I think that a lot of the reasons that I'm going to bring up and at the end of the day, I think that, you know, whether you're running a black powder revolver or something like this, a high speed low drag Glock 19 with a red dot sight and all the fun toys that absolutely you should run a fire firearm to protect yourself because even things like a black powder revolver all are although they are archaic are still leaps and bounds better than trying to use a knife or trying to use some type of alternative tool to affect your survival so even just the presence of even rudimentary firearms is more than enough to intimidate and in some cases end situations before they even start so i will say though it's not commonly mentioned i do think things like uh, black powder firearms which are normally unregulated or regulated a lot less than say a modern firearm that looks black and scary like this uh, i do think that those are absolutely valid and if i was in a country or state where this was prohibited, I would probably still be carrying some type of uh, high speed or I'd probably be carrying some kind of makeshift or some type of black powder revolver in a makeshift CCW uh, holster to affect or to, to affect self-protection. So I will say that I think firearms should be carried at all costs whenever reasonably possible. Of course, there are places you can't go with them, and obviously things like metal detectors will largely prevent you from carrying firearms. But anyways, now let's talk about some of the reasoning behind EDCing a firearm. I think the first one that a lot of people like to glaze over is the fact that, you know, once again, going back to the knife topic or even talking about any other piece of EDC gear, whether it's a watch that we're wearing, whether it's a flashlight, a pen, a knife, uh, really anything that you wear or carry with you every day, it's to serve a task, to serve a function, and to serve a purpose. Now, some parts of the EDC community with things like tokens or coins or uh, like fidget spinners and stuff like that have gone a little bit away from the practicality side of carrying equipment with you but no less is it important to have things or tools in your tool belt so to speak or on your body to help you solve problems 
firearms are the exact same in that regard. You carry a knife so you can open packages, you carry a firearm to protect yourself, you carry a flashlight so you can see in the dark and find objects that may be obscured or hidden away by the light, and so on and so forth. You know, you carry each and every piece of equipment for a specific task and purpose, and a firearm is the exact same way. Now, that's the primary reason why you should carry a firearm, have it on your body, and or have a firearm on you. Now, I think that it should be on your body as opposed to in a vehicle or in a bag or a pack uh, because you really do want this piece of equipment to be closest to your body and ready to use at any point in time. Unlike a knife, unlike a flashlight, the one key differentiator between a firearm is it will be probably, hopefully, one of your least used pieces of equipment, but when you do need it, you do need it with either a great deal of speed, you know, you have to present it and get it on target to stop an issue quickly, or you're going to need it to be drawn in a great deal of discretion, i.e. you don't want it to be, you know, uh, drawing attention as you draw your firearm. So I think that, you know, there are a number of off-body setups that are okay, but truly you should always carry a firearm and EDC it on your body. Because once again, with knives, with flashlights, stuff like that, a package isn't going to be, you know, chasing you down. You're not going to need to draw your knife super quick to cut open a piece of mail because it's about to hurt you. You know, you're not going to need a flashlight instantaneously, usually, uh, because you will be able to see if you're going into a dark environment, prepare your flashlight for that dark environment, and have it ready to go. So by and large, a lot of times, you know, with things like flashlights, knives, pens, all those kinds of other EDC things, you can get away genuinely with having them not on your body. But with a firearm, you really do want it on your body because of the fact of how fast you may need to draw it, how, may, how fast you may need to deploy it and get it into a situation, or in kind of contrast, you still want to get it out quickly, but you need a great deal of discretion, i.e., you know, when you draw out a knife, it doesn't really matter who sees it. If you're just going to cut open a package or a letter, you know, it doesn't really matter if anyone notices that you're pulling out the knife. However, pulling out a firearm can be a completely different story. Once again, every situation is different. There are quite a few situations where you may need to draw a firearm surreptitiously or with a great deal of discretion, kind of hidden. And so therefore, not only do you want your firearm, hidden and not open carried, uh, though open carry does have a time and place, you definitely do want the firearm, you know, to be able to be drawn with a great deal of discretion. So that's why I think that ultimately having a firearm on your body and having the firearm as a whole is quite important. So that's why I think you should carry a firearm, where you should carry the firearm. And lastly, as I kind of preluded in this, in kind of the intro to this video, you know, a lot of people are like, well, then what should I run? And I would say if at all possible, get the best possible firearm or, you know, firearm-like uh, tool that you can get in your area that you can legally carry. Of course, we do always want to try to abide by as many laws as possible. If you have to end up breaking laws, that is on you, you know, I'm not encouraging that or saying that you should, but at the same time too, you know, you have to kind of determine and figure out where your self-protection, you know, falls or the importance of your life, the value of your life. And so for me, I usually say get the best possible thing that you legally can. And luckily in places like Alaska, which is a part of the U.S., you you know, something like this firearm here is completely and totally legal to have. It is pretty nicely set up. I could, you know, make this a little bit better maybe by putting a compensator on the barrel, but as it stands, you know, as a good red dot sight, it's a Glock 19 uh, build, and so it's essentially just a customized Glock 19, very reliable, very accurate, very durable, uh, just a really solid firearm, and, you know, some people might argue the uh, capacity being only, you know, 15 plus one, but at the same time, too, it's more than decent for handling just about any realistic problem. Of course, I do run some other firearms that have greater capacity, but by and large, something like this Glock 19 is a very realistic gun to carry. However, once again, if your country, state, uh, jurisdiction, borough, whatever, doesn't allow you to EDC or conceal carry a firearm like this, I know that there are a lot of places that don't. Just remember that... Uh, 
And once again, you always want to check your laws for any types of exceptions, but oftentimes there are usually loopholes for things like black powder firearms because they're not considered legally firearms. So oftentimes there are kind of legal loopholes for you to be able to CCW or conceal carry something like a black powder revolver and something like a Lamat styled revolver can still carry eight shots. Once again, it's not the best. It's a far cry from this, but if you do practice and you do carry it uh, regularly, you can also modify it, make good holsters for them and get that type of setup. So, you know, once again, a black powder revolver is a far cry from something as nice as this, but it does give you a firearm. And most times what's often not talked about in self-defense encounters is how many uh, firearms or how many encounters are purely prevented by the presence of a firearm. And once again, a would-be robber, a would-be, you know, assailant isn't going to be able to recognize and distinguish your black powder revolver from a just about any other firearm in the moment. Um, and once again, you do have the ability to fire back or fire if you need to with that type of firearm. But uh, <clears throat> oftentimes, just the mere presence of having a firearm can prevent a wide number of issues. If things like fancy modern day firearms are not uh, available to you or restricted in your area, definitely look for alternatives and think about EDCing firearms or guns as a whole. Uh, I absolutely recommend looking at it in all options and in all cases, it is really important to have the proper tools to solve any of life situations. Once again, that's why we carry knives, flashlights, pens, watches. You know, that's why we have all this stuff on us. It's to solve different problems that come up. And so firearms are really no different in that regard they really are there to solve problems and of course i do have more videos documenting and talking about my particular edc firearms i do carry this one this glock 19 quite a bit but i do carry a glock 19x fn 509c uh, czp 10c and a whole bunch of other firearms so i do carry quite a few and i do have videos on those if you're looking for more suggestions of what to carry uh, and you do have the ability to carry modern firearms Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it helps you out. Hopefully some of these suggestions are useful to you in your particular area. And as always, guys, God bless and I'm out.